Okay, so we're looking at lesson 5.5, which is still kind of similar to yesterday. It's multiplying one-digit numbers by multiples of 10. So, the community center offers, oh, let me get it fixed up. The community center offers four dance classes. If 30 students each sign up for, sign up for each class, how many students sign up for dance class? So first off, how many equal groups are there? Well, there are four. How many are in each class? There's 30. Look at this big number, four and 30. So they made four groups of, um, yeah, they made four groups of 30. You have four down, one, two, three, four, and 10, 20, 30 in each row. Okay, so that's step one. We model it. Step two, combine the tens, regroup the 12 tens. about that so we, they modeled four groups of 30 now it says combine the tens group regroup the 12 tens and one hundreds so when you combined it you're going to have 12 tens and 100 or 12 tens we have one ten two ten these we have we have 12 blocks so that gives us 12 tens well 12 tens is the same as 102 tens or also you can say 12 tens right 12 how many zeros does 10 have in it? That. For example, what's four times three? 12. How many zeros do you see? One. So we had one zero. So it's 120 students. Up here, it does say 100 and two tens. So we have one. 100 has two. 100 and two tens. Two. 10 has one zero. And it would look like that as well if we'd add them 102 tens is the same as 120. so the next one says use a quick picture to record your model draw a stick for each 10 draw a square for each hundred so we have a model we have one two three four five six seven we count it again. Yep. And we have four across, so 10, 20, 30, 40. So our problem is seven times 40. So we're going to combine tens. Every time we combine tens, we're going to draw a circle. If we get 10 tens, it makes one square, I mean, that circle square. So 10 tens makes one square. So they did it right here. One, two, three, four, five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So they have twenty, so they have two blocks. This stands for a hundred, and this stands for a hundred. So what's one hundred plus or how many hundreds do you see? We see two hundreds. You don't put two hundred here because two hundred hundreds is not right. Two hundreds. How many tens are left over? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight tens. So we have two hundreds and eight tens. So two hundreds has two zeros. And then eight tens, eight tens has one zero. So it's 200 plus 280, which equals, or 200 plus 80, which equals 280. The other way you can look at it is what, you learn to do next year, or sometimes it might be this year too. 
What's seven times three or seven times four? Seven times four is 28. How many zeros do you see? Add one zero. There's one. And if it, let's say it was seven times 400. What's seven times four? 28. How many zeros do you see? Two. So I would just add two zeros. Even if it did seven times 4,000, what's seven times four? 28. How many zeros do you see? Three. Like that. If you guys can understand that part, this lesson will be a breeze to you. All right. So use the place value in regrouping. So find nine times 50. So we modeled it. We have nine rows and five tens across. Multiply the ones. Nine times zero, look right here. Nine times zero is zero. Now we got to multiply the tens and they, they modeled it here. They, we, they, they pulled out four, 10, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They pulled out 40 tens. And we know tens has one zero in it. So 40 tens is 400. And they show you right here. Here's 100, 100, 100, 100. So nine times five tens is 45 tens. Regroup the tens. So we group the 45 tens as four hundreds and five tens. Because there's four hundreds now and there's five left over. So nine times five is 45 and add our zero. So it'd be like 400 plus 50. And over here, you do nine times zero, which is zero. Then you do nine times five, which is 45. Five, carry your four, bring it down. The next one, use the quick picture to find five times 40. Well, they made their tens. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five, 10, 15, 20. So if you, if you have to circle, and for every 10 you circle, so we have two circles, which is 100 squares, I'm sorry, 100 and 100. 100 and 100 make 200. Well, we can do it the other way. Five times four is 20. How many zeros do you see? One. Add it. Because that zero and 20 does not count. The zero and the 20 does not count. Find the product use base 10. We don't have base 10 blocks and you don't have your math board, so we're going to do it the other way. Ask yourself, seven times three is 21. How many zeros do you see? One. Nine times two is 18. How many zeros do you see? One, 180. Eight times four is 32. How many zeros do you see? One, add our one zero. Lastly, six times four is um, 24. How many zeros do you see? One, add our one zero. Give you a second to copy that down. All right, next. It says find the product. So this is in steps. We got it, it's kind of like addition. We got to do the first number, then we do the second number. So we know for a fact, nine times zero is zero. And then nine times eight, what's one less than eight? Seven, seven plus what makes nine? Two. 
So it's 72. So it's 2, 7. So it's here to here, then here to here. Okay. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 7 is 49. So 9, 4, 49. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 9 is 36. 6. We, we would carry our 3 up here and then bring it down. 36. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 6 is 48. So it's going to be 8 to 4. Bring it down. Just like that. Just like that. Next. All right, seven times two, two times seven, we know is 14. We have one zero. Eight times five is 40. How many zeros do we have? One. So add it in there. Nine times three is 27. And then we have the one zero. Two times eight is 16. With one zero makes 160. Three times zero is zero. Three times eight is 24. Four, your two would go up and then you just bring it straight down. Nine times zero is zero. Um, nine times six is 54. So four, bring your five up. If we'd have another number here, you'd have to add that five. But we don't, so bring it down. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 9 is 72. 2. Bring it down. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 8 is 64. So it's 4. Bring 6 and carry it down. And let's say, let's just say this was 81 for a second. It would look like this. 8 times 1 is 8. Then 8 times 8 is 64. So it would kind of look like this. Okay. Some people get comfortable with that 0. No matter what this number is, they, they, will, they will always put a 0 here. And I want you to understand, it's not always a 0, but in this instance, in this lesson, it will be. Um, 6 times 7. Is 42. We have one zero, so we're going to add one zero. Nine times nine is 81. Has one zero, so we're going to add one zero. Seven times eight is 56. It has one zero, so we're going to add one zero. And nine times seven is 63. And it has one zero, so we're going to add one zero. Next one. A times 80 equals 480. We'll ask ourselves. We already have our zeros. Okay. So what, what we're really looking at is. What times 8 is 48? It's 6. B times 30 equals 30. So we already have our zeros. So now looking at what times three equals three? One. Seven times what equals 420? We don't have our zero, so we gotta make sure this is a zero, okay? So now seven times what equals 42? Six. And then 50 times what equals zero? Well, anything times zero equals zero.
All right. Ava's class bought six packages of balloons for the school celebration. Each package has 30 balloons. If 17 balloons were left over, how many balloons did they use for the party? Well, first off, we had to find the total number of balloons they had. So we have six packages with 30 in each. I know that six times three is 18. And then we have to add one zero. So we had 180 balloons and there's 17 left over. So we're gonna take 180. Let me do it right here. 180, we're gonna subtract it from 17 and that'll give us the total number that we used. Zero minus seven, we can't do because there's more on the floor, let's go next door. The eight becomes a seven, the zero becomes a 10. So 10 minus seven is three, seven minus one is six, one minus zero is one. So, 163 balloons. 163 balloons is the final answer. All right, give me a second to copy all that. Um, Lori says that eight is not a factor of 80 because eight does not end in a zero. Does that make sense? So what we're asking is, can anything times eight, this is n, equal 80? Eight times what equals 80? Can n be anything? Yes, and that is 10. So does Lori sense make sense? No. Eight is a factor. Eight can make 10. So if you have this problem right here, this equation, and this sentence, you are right. Eight definitely can make 80. The book club members read 200 books in all. Each member read five books. Write an equation to find the number of the books, the number of members in the book club. Use a letter to stand for the unknown factor. So we're gonna just write an equation. So each member read five books and they've read a total, so five, we already have our total, so times n equals 200. We got to find out what n equals. Well, ask yourself, five times what equals 20? If we skip count, we have five, 10, 15, 20, so it's four. So we've, it, we, we got that out of the way, and we got to add our one zero. So 40 members. There's 40 members. Number 29. Frank has a two digit number on his baseball uniform. The number is a multiple of 10 and has three as one of its factors. What three numbers could Frank have on his uniform? So, it's a two, what do we need to find? What three numbers Frank has. What three numbers Frank has. He has a chance of having three numbers. What information do I need to use? Well, we know 
It's a two digit number. It is a multiple of 10. And has a factor of three. Or n factor of three. So. It's a two digit number. It has a multiple of. 10 and it is a factor of three. So there's a few ways we can go about this. A few ways. Is asking how can we solve this problem? And we'll talk and we'll uh, go through it. So we know we have to list our multiples of 10. And a multiple of 10 is just like skip counting. So you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. We can't go any farther because it's not two digits. So ask yourself, can three make any of these numbers? Well, I know right off, three times 10 makes 30, okay? Now let's try three again, because we gotta have three in here, because it has to be a factor. Let's try three times 20, because 20 is up here, and I can use, I have to use three. So I, I tried three times 10, check. Now let me try three times, because it made 30, and it's up here. Let me try three times 20, because I can still use it. It makes 60, because three times two is six, out of one zero. Is six up here? Yes. Let me try three times 30. Three times three is nine, at our zero. Look, and nine is up here. Now let me try... Three times 40. That equals 120. So it, we can't do any more because it's going to be too big. It's going to be three digits. So these are the three numbers that Frank could have on his uniform. 30, 60, or 90. So Frank has a blank on his uniform. Frank has a two digit number. Two digit number on his uniform. The number is a multiple of 10 and has a factor of three. Remember, three has to be able to make it. But Frank could either have 30, 60, or 90 on his uniform 30 60 or 90 on his uniform i know that's a pretty big problem so I'll give you a second to copy everything down All right. It says Baker Farm grows and sells carrots to local grocery stores. The store bundles the carrots to sell. Which grocery store bought the greatest the greater number of carrots from Baker Farm? And how many carrots did they the store buy? So we're gonna see who bought the most carrots. So they bought six carrots in one bundle and uh the bundles were 90 so we're gonna ask yourself buy more bought six of 90 what's six times nine 54 we're gonna add our zero so they bought 540 carrots lower price foods bought eight of 60 eight times six is 48 at our zero. So right now, who's bought more? Buy more or lower price? It's going to be buy more. 
Yummy Foods brought seven bundles of 80. Seven times eight is 56. We gotta add our zero. So now it's gonna be 560. So now Yummy Foods has the most. Lastly, Healthy Foods bought nine of 70. And I know nine times seven is 63. And we're gonna add our zero. Because these zeros right here. So who bought the most carrots? Healthy Foods. And how many did they buy? 630. So it's gonna be Healthy Foods. with 630 carrots. Healthy foods with 630 carrots. The least amount was lower price foods. The buy more and yummy were right in the middle. So healthy foods with 630. Give you a second to copy all that down. All right. Um, these, they want you to kind of do it like this. Like 60 times 30. So we're going to have to do like three down. But they want you to do it like three across since that's the second number and then six down. Four, five, and six. So they want you to bundle these. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So So if we bundle these four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's one. This makes 100 with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 left. And we know six times three is 18 at our zero. Same thing here. We have five down. And six across. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So they want us to circle every 10. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to circle this. Makes 100. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Makes 200. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Makes 300. And there's none left over. So final answer is going to be just 300. And five times six is 30 at our zero. I'm um, explain how to find four times 10. You guys can do it really like this. Um, you could do four times or four times 80 or was broken up into four times eight. Um, which equals 32 and then add. The zero. Which equals 320. Or you could show me like this. Some people do it like this way. 80 times 40 or 4. 4 times 8 is 0. 8 times 4 is 32. 2 carry your 3. Either one will work. On the back, uh, I'll put this on Schoology. Um, so you guys can complete it. Other than that, you guys should be good. Have a good one.